Sparks, if you will, take it away. Hey, we're finally talking about Essex County by Jeff Lemire. Yay. Oh, he works at Marvel, Yay. I hear. <laughs> nope. Hey, uh, guys, what's up? What'd you think? Yeah, this is great. You are so far uh, you batting a thousand with your book clubs, dude. Yeah. Uh, you, you bring like, you bring like the real shit. I like, not that like we don't bring real shit, but like I, I bring like fun, sometimes fun books, but you bring like the shit comics are made of, dude. You bring the stuff that like this makes This actually is made out of comic it's books. It's made out of comic it's books, r- yeah. The ripped up comic <laughs> books put into. It's recycled. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, this is, uh, this is one for the ages, dude. Well, Ben, anything? I was not expecting Essex County at all. I did not know what I was going to get. What I got, holy crap. I kind of do want to go up to Canada to Essex County to say I actually been there. It's a fictionalized version of it. So though. it's his. I, I know it's but. his hometown. He's fictionalized it and kind of fantasized it. And uh, man, I was reading it. I was not sure how it was going to wrap up, but it wraps up so beautifully. Actually, I lied. I have been there. I have been to Windsor, Ontario, which is part of Essex County. Yeah. yeah, so I actually have been there. Damn it. <laughs> so Sparks, lead us through this. This is your book. So club. so it's it's cut into three books essentially. Uh three stories. And the first one is about Lester, uh Papa New. And he is uh kind of an, an odd duck. I was gonna say we'll odd say. duck too. Yeah, he's he's a bit of an odd duck and he he gets this connection developed with uh the gas station clerk named Jimmy who used to be a hockey player and, and uh, seems to be not, at least people think he's not quite right in the head since he got injured. Um, and then the second book is about uh, Lou, Lou the Buff, um, and his uh, he's got severe Alzheimer's, and he's constantly misplacing himself and putting himself back in his own past and reliving uh, past events of how he lost his relationship with his brother, essentially. That's and then was super misleading. Yeah, and then the third one is is about this nurse who took care of him, and then also kind of about her own ancestor at the same time. And uh, the, through her story, you kind of realize how people are connected, and that's where you realize that spoilers that that Lester and Lou are actually connected down a long bloodline. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's this whole wide story about a, a family, essentially. Yeah, and that, um, and that bird, is it? Was it a crow bird? Was it a crow? I yeah, was it a, crow? a crow. I didn't yeah. like that crow being, um, like the like the uh, the the old caretaker guy in the final book. Like it's like yeah. wraps it all around because like that crow's been there this entire book and it shows where it came from. I'm like, oh my god, Jeff Lemire. That reveal oh was one of the best because I'm looking at the the bloodlines. I'm thinking, oh wow, these guys are actually they con- they're connected in a way. You know, they're not related, but they do go back and just seeing that crow. Just like well, oh. they they are related, like it's the story of this one family essentially, oh, yeah. and how they're both connected to each other. Except except for the nurse's side of the family, yes. Yeah, the the nurse isn't related at all. She's she's on her own separate s- storyline. But then there's there's the you know you've got Lester, and he is actually the son of Jimmy, who mm-hmm. is the gas station clerk that that people are weird about, mm-hmm. and uh, is- his mother, his yeah. mother was Mary, who was the daughter of Lou's. Uh, brother, uh, and lose his uh, Lester's uh, great grandfather, and and their uh, uh, descendant is the one that the caretaker took uh, looked after. Correct. Um. Yes. Yes. And so that's, and so that's the weird, just that weird uh, that that moment when you go back after you realize that you look at that moment when they pass each other in the snow, mm-hmm. Lester and Lou. And it's oh, just yeah. like they, they have no e- idea who each other is to the other. Um, I really love Lou's story in a in a painful way. I really like Lester's story with Jimmy in like a, a hopeful way. I love the way Jimmy just creates the uh, fictional alien invasion with that so Lester. Sweet. That was so cool. Um, I really like that. And and Lou's Lou's whole fall apart is so brutal to watch because he, he like just loses contact with his family, loses contact with his mom, uh, never contacts his family again, essentially because he had one night with uh, his brother's his brother's girl. Yep. Yeah, it's a real testament as to how 
uh, something like that can be so damaging to the character of someone mm-hmm. um, that it could really just change your whole perspective of family in general. Yep. Um, and I really feel like Jeff Lemire gets family drama in all its shapes. You know, we saw it with Animal Man, and we see it here. Um, his artwork is exquisite, and only he could write or draw something, write and draw something like this. And it's a little bit more subdued than what he's become known for. Uh, certainly, uh, things like Trillium come to mind, um, which I, I'll be honest, didn't care for. Um, but I just feel like I love family drama when it's written so well, and uh, there's no one better to write a story like this. Jeff Lemire, for me, I see him more as I like. I love his writing more than I love his art because I think uh, Trillium was one of the first books of his I picked up that he wrote and um, drew, drew by himself, and I wasn't really crazy about his art. Reading Essex County changed my mind completely. It's all in black and white, and I think that's the best part about this book that it's just so black and white. Why does he just focus on the words? Yeah, it's yeah. in can it's it takes place in Essex County, Canada. People know it snows up there. And just this the winter scenes are just for me, they're so much more impactful just in black and white. And his art style fits that. There's so many great panels that are just dialogueless. Yeah. And yeah, the 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 impact he's able to put into like just slowly getting close on these actually fairly fairly simplistic faces. Yeah. But you get this more emotion as you get closer to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um yeah, dude, I'm uh uh I'm just going to be very real and honest here. Like my dad died recently, right? And that sucks. And uh this book is is it deals a lot of stuff of family drama and it worked really well and like uh like disconnecting with your family like my whole family like you guys too like we all have dysfunctional families in some certain ways right and comics i try to avoid this stuff in comics normally because you know i say that for movies comics are about two periods like not all the time of course obviously uh but this book hit me in a really uh, specific time and place and it was it was really really uh thought provoking it was really sweet and uh, uh, people with Alzheimer's, like, uh, it's, it's such a bummer, dude. Well, let me, you, let me piggyback back off of what you just said, yeah. because much in the same way that you had uh, a real moment with this book, I, I had too, but for a different, uh, a different and moment. There's, and there's so many, so many uh, layers uh, for, like, the different family members, so uh, there's so many different things that so many people could take away from it, yeah. which makes it so powerful, because it's relatable to everyone. Yeah, and much in the same way, um, something that scares me more than anything itself is Alzheimer's. Yeah. Uh, the the thoughts of losing your, oneself and who you are. You are your memories. You are the shape of your memories, and mm-hmm. it's it, it's devastating to me. Uh, Alzheimer's as a disease, but also in that sense that that second story is so impactful for me. It it hits all all of my emotional heartstrings yeah. with distancing yourself from family. Um, you know some you know. You have expectations of going to a big city and it doesn't work out the way you want it to. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of lose your facilities and, and then you have to move back home. And, you know, things that I'm fearful of, you know, that one night that, she, that he spends with his, uh, with his brother's girl, you know, God, I mean, I can't get too real, but it, it's just, it, it really hit me. Yeah. It really hit me seeing him distance himself from his family after that night. And uh, and uh, I'm sorry to tear up a little. No, bit. Yeah, someone it, take it away from and me. And they never, and they never, uh, and the beauty of it is like, it, like in real life, like it's never talked about until they meet each other years later. Yeah. And they do talk about it, and shit goes bad. And there she is. Yeah, it, it is, and it's never fully resolved. It, it, like the whole like thing real is life. this pain of like not not really repairing it. Um, yeah, I uh, what I really like about it is uh, the characters are all uh, like the main characters. They're all very unique. They're, they have their their things that really set them apart from like your average person, mm-hmm. uh, whatever those those things may be. But they never feel unreal to me. Yeah. Like they're they're off put from your typical person, but they never feel like so fantasized that they don't feel real. No, this and is like I the really, most real comic I've ever read. Right, and I really appreciate that. I I thought it it balanced that line really well of like taking these characters to kind of I- extreme extreme circumstances of how they behave but not ever getting to that point where they don't feel like real people what was um lester's uh, uh was it hank uncle's uncle name? was the name hank oh, I don't recall. uh his uh yeah his anyway, uncle so yeah, who was so, looking after uh, him? uh 
so Hank has to take care of Lester, right? And yeah, I, I've had a couple stepdads, so I understand that. Like, yo, you trying to bond with this kid who's not your kid, and like, and like, I think I had a moment with him, right? And like things like that, and like, like, hey, how was your day? It's fine. Do you want to eat dinner? No. And to the kid, it doesn't seem like anything. But to the to the dad, that's like, I, oh, I yeah. failed. No, I yeah. failed. Absolutely. And like, it's little moments like that where I'm like. Uh, it's like it works in movies so well, but like in comics, like when you can get a panel of like two different reactions of faces, like panels, you can take the time yeah. to to you can have that silent panel of just yeah. them sitting. Yeah. For a movie, uh, for a movie, you know, you gotta move. Exactly. You gotta yeah. move because yeah. you only get so so much to tell a story, and only sometimes can you are you offered the ability to take that those moments, and they're better for it. But in comics, you can always take those moments. Yeah, yeah uh, Kenny, his uncle's Kenny. Kenny, Kenny. 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 I don't know um, who he is. Yeah, I uh, something that kept coming up, uh, you know, there's a lot of times in the first part where uh, Lester's sitting at the kitchen table with Kenny and uh, he isolates that cross in the background mm -hmm. in the art. And I was just like, oh, man, he's just he, he lays on such an image of how Kenny operates his home. Because, so because Kenny is such an interesting character because at one at one point he's like, I didn't want this responsibility but because my sister asked me to do it. I will do it. And I want to bond with this kid. I do like this kid. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, but I it's cannot. Tough. I cannot let his father be in his life. Yeah. Because of what happened. Like the only thing Kenny and Lester really bond on is hockey. That's about it. He's not really much into superheroes at all. But even so, like that hockey is so important to the entire family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They it's all like a bond line. on on hockey. I mean, uh, the, the 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 second story. The Lou. when they're older, Lou and his brother, they bond over hockey again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With with watching it with Jimmy. Who is Lester's dad? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, that's uh, so good. It, it, it uh, weaves, I also it, sorry. It we it just weaves through all three stories just like so perfectly. Like it's 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 a real right. winner. I also really love uh, whenever we see Lester's comic stories, his drawings. Yeah, dude. Mm -hmm. Those are they really look great. they oh, yeah. look so much like what you draw when you're a kid. Yeah. Definitely. I want to like say he captured that perfectly. That's like inspired by like old like Jeff Lemire drawings that he used to do and stuff. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Uh, so I, I hope you guys can kind of see why I was like, you got, you got to do all three parts. Absolutely. Don't just oh, do yeah. book one. Yeah. Kind of is you like need one the long whole story. story. No. Yeah, and they're yeah. Fa fairly quick to get through. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, surprisingly, like they're very thick, but like it is pretty dialogueless. Yeah, yeah it's I, not a bad thing. No, there's this one line I want to uh, touch on just a tiny little bit. In the second book is also my favorite. Sparks. I mean, it is such great family drama. That's the main focus. But you guys know my favorite sport is hockey. Yeah. I absolutely love hockey. And I used to play a little bit of hockey in high school. And there's this one line that Lou says when he's old, he's gone deaf, he doesn't drive anymore, he's bummed, so he goes back to the only place he knows, which is working at a hockey rink, and he starts coaching kids since he his um, dreams of playing in the NHL were shattered due to his knee. Yep. And there's this line he says is that if you played the game, the game never leaves you. You can always go back to it. Yeah. And I, I played in high school a little bit. It was just a community thing. I, there was no way in hell I could ever play, play for the NHL as much as I dreamed it. But I was reading this something that does that's true. Every time I go to a professional hockey game, be it Kings of the Rain or any game, it's like I feel at home. Yeah. I know what's going on. I love sharing uh, it with people. Regardless if it's like hockey, or like whatever, like your true passion is, like it'll, it'll, you'll find it. It'll, yeah. fi it'll yeah. find you. Yeah. yeah. And I love how every member of the family. That as, as much as they yell at each other, as much as there's tension between the two of them, as much sadness and horrible things happen, there's one tiny little ray of sauce they can get, and that's at a hockey game. And that's actually a really great, really great thing because you see how a, a bond is stronger. James. Sorry, you see how a bond is stronger than fights, than mm -hmm. petty differences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, you know. They fight, they bicker, but they have this one thing that they put it all down. They're like, this is our thing. We'll always have this thing. We'll always love this thing together. And it doesn't matter that's hockey, but also, you know, you know what you just said, It this book has, you know, a lot of different pieces for so many different people. You, uh, you, Ryan, took away something completely different than what I took away from it, but both are incredibly valid because both are within this book. Same with you, Ben. Same with, I'm sure, Sparks. Nah, Sparks doesn't. He didn't like Sparks. Doesn't take anything from it. You're right. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, I I do really like the way that hockey's handled this. I think one of my favorite moments where the hockey came into play is uh, 
when when Lou is holding Vince when Vince dies, and then Lou imagines oh, yeah. all their old teammates oh, tapping the sticks me, for him. That's that, messed up. That is one of the most respectful. That was really upsetting. That was one of the most in. That is one of the most respectful things any hockey player can do. Because whenever someone gets hurt or whenever something happens, like they're honoring a player, all the players are on the ice and they tap their sticks in appreciation. Mm-hmm. And as I'm reading that, I was so close to bawling my eyes out. It it was so and beautifully it's such a beautiful, drawn. It's such a beautiful moment because in that moment, I feel like Lou realized I, I there's so many things that we never just resolved mm-hmm. because we could never talk about it. And now you're gone and I will never have that moment. Yeah. I mean, it's it's scary, and and it, it is a pretty sad book. But like, uh, like when when what's what's Lou's brother's name again? Oh, Vince. 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 So when Lou and Vince are like, when it's like the good times and like they're playing hockey and like things are going great, that that reading that it's like it's so enjoyable and it's so like like he writes like great like he great emotions just as well as sad emotions. Like seeing them like. Uh, just like be happy together and then you get like the glances of the wife towards towards them and it's like oh I could see I could see the, the strings coming apart here right exactly yeah. or when Lou meets his niece Margaret for the very first time and we still don't know if Margaret is his daughter or not oh that was all like oh dude and like when they have the fight and like she's mine you know like, what do you his. mean? She's, she's his. She's, yeah, she's in like, like you know what I'm talking about. I'm like, oh God, they're going to start fighting. And then, and then, he, he and then up, even yeah. Margaret starts writing to him and says, hey, I feel this connection to you. And then God, her life is tragically cut short by that car accident. It just, it hurt me. It's rough, it man. hurt me reading that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Let's get some final thoughts because this is oh, ten out of ten. A lot to unpack, and it is, it is a tear. It's like certainly a, like a, a Ghostbusters jerker. comic next week or something fun. Well, uh, I, I got I, I got you covered, buddy. Final thoughts, Sparks. This is your book club. You take that away. Um, I really wanted to share it because this was something I kind of picked up on a whim. Um, I was browsing around and I wanted to pick up something different in a comic shop, and uh, I found Essex County in its complete collected edition. And I and I kind of looked at it and I glanced through at the art. And it looked just, it, it, I wanted something different and I wasn't prepared for the kind of story it was. Um, but I really appreciate the, I really like when you find something in comics that can really tell a story about people that's just as effective as any other art form and really can hit you just like you were saying, Ryan, just like you were saying, Brandon, like it really gets you. Uh, it really gets you something that you completely connect to that feels really real and that comics can do that too. And and this is, a, in my opinion, a great example of it. And so I, I was really happy to share it. I wanted to find the right time where we could knock out all parts of it yeah. because I really appreciate it. Fortunately, it did take us like three weeks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, We had a lot to yeah. talk about though. 